Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to Torah Treasures with yours truly, Michael Ben David. And this week's Torah portion is Parashat Bo, which means come. Even though it says go to Pharaoh, but it really means come into Pharaoh. Come and I'll show you what's in the heart of Pharaoh. So we're going to get into it in a minute. But every week I try to ask Abba to give me a song for the par parasha. And so this week I have this melody, spontaneous melody, um, from the very first verse, where the part that says, Shalach ami vayavduni, um, let my people go or send my people off that they may serve me. Ad matai meaneta laanot mi panai. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? And I added, Ani Adonai Tzevaot, Ani Hashem Ve'enod. I am the master of armies, the master of legions. I am Yud Hey Vav Hey, and there is no other. Hope you enjoy it. God bless. <laughs> Shalach ami ve'yabduni Shalach ami ve'yabduni Ad matai me'aneta Le'anot mi'banai Ani Adonai tsevahot Ani Hashem Let my people go that they may serve me. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? I am Adonai Tzevao, the Lord of hosts, the master of legions. I am Havaya, Yud Hei Vavei, Yehovah, Yahweh. There is no other. And I really believe this was and still is a battle over whom you will worship. And so as we go into it, we will delve more into the first verse. And that was my wife featured in the background playing the flute and uh, probably the girls in the background making noise. But such is the life with family. Um, but again, Shabbat Shalom and welcome to Parashat Bo. Just want to encourage you to study the scriptures for yourself. These Torah portions are really very telling, and very revealing for these days. And uh, I am seeing things in here that I haven't seen in 18 years or so. I've been walking this Torah walk and studying the Torah, 18 plus, and I was blown away and I want to share a few things. It's going to be very short, but very sweet. And uh, yeah, we just, we bless Yah for his word. We bless him for his Ruach, for the Ruach Emet, the spirit of truth, Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of holiness 
that leads us to walk into all truth, that leads us to live a sanctified life, and that gives us the power, the koach, to serve Him, to worship Him above all gods. Because this Torah portion is all about God coming to judge not the people, not the Egyptians, but the gods of the peoples. We have to be careful not to get caught up in debates over religions, over people's belief system, because God is loves all religion, he loves all the people, but he wants to destroy the idols of the nations. He wants to destroy the ideology behind all that. That he is Hashem, there is no other. He is Yud Hey Vav Hey, the one who was and is and is to come, there is no other. And so we need to understand that he's out to save people. He's he wants to save and to love people. He's not here to condemn people, but to judge the gods and the idols of Egypt and of all the nations. Hallelujah. It's good to know the heart of God. He's not out to destroy it. It just so happened that the armies of Israel and Pharaoh refused to, to humble themselves and they all got swept or drowned in the sea, however you want to look at it. Swept under the sand and, and with their chariots and with all their strength, with all their powers, with all their ideologies and all their philosophies. But like it says in Isaiah, only the plans and the counsel of Hashem shall stand, not the plans of men so we can trust in his word we can trust in him who spoke it and he who spoke it shall perform it he's watching over his own word to perform it so uh yeah thank you hashem thank you hashem for giving us the torah and so let's open our scriptures again you should study for yourself um parashat bo this week is shmot exodus um chapters 10 1 through chapters 13 verse 16 um, and I pray that you will be blessed by what we study. So, Parashat Bo. Again, you have to understand that earlier, I think in, um, um, in last week's Torah portion, uh, in chapter 9, verse 16, it says, For this purpose I have raised you up, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, that I may show my power in you and through you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. So, Whatever the enemies, whatever powers that exist um, and that resist the things of Yah, He's the one who's raised them up so that He may show His power in and through them and that His name may be declared in all the earth. So we don't need to, when we, did, when we do all that we can and did all that we could to pray and to believe and to have hope for um, let's say a particular government, a particular um, uh, ruler to rule, and we're let down, we have to know that it is God who exalts one and humbles one. It is God who puts one in power in one, and he's the one who removes. Um, but at the same time, you have to know that sometimes he raises up pharaohs just so that he may show himself strong, just so that he may bring them to a place where they're all drowned into the sea. So it's like um, we don't lose heart because uh, the things of Yah are beyond us. His, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways for sure is, are not our ways. And so we can just be encouraged that He is on the throne and He's doing something amazing. He is moving mountains and summoning angels and um, um, yeah, setting up traps and sending plagues and doing whatever he can to exalt himself through the pharaohs that are in power. To, um, so be encouraged. So let's start. Well, the first thing I want to say is, is, is um, again, when it says um, in the Hebrew, let me put up the Hebrew, when it says, um, Moshe, Bo El Paro, and Hashem said to Moshe, go in unto Paro. It, it, the word is come. Uh, Bo is come to Paro, come in unto Paro. So one thing I have taught before is like, come is like, God is saying, I'm already there. You don't need to be scared. You t when you tell a kid, come, come, he comes to you. And even if there's something that may be um, frightening to stand before the powers that be and to stand before something or that uh, or someone that's more powerful than you if your heavenly father and your father is saying come you have more courage to come so that's one thing but he's also saying come into pharaoh let me show you what's inside the heart of pharaoh for i have 
weighed his heart. I know in the uh, English it says he hardened his heart, but that's not what it says at all in the Hebrew. It says, Ki ani higbadeti et libo. I have weighed his heart. And what does it say in uh, Proverbs? In Proverbs it says this. In Proverbs 21 verse 1, the king's heart is in the hand of Hashem, and like the rivers of water, he turns it wherever he wishes. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, including Pharaoh, but Adonai weighs the hearts. And why does he weigh the heart? He weighs the heart to see if, if you would do righteousness and justice, for this is what's acceptable in his sight and not sacrifice. And so once he weighed Pharaoh's heart, what was, what was uh, um, how did it turn out? It's when he weighed his heart, there was unrighteousness in his heart, there was injustice. And so God allowed him to um, strengthen his heart to do his will. His will was to do unrighteousness. Uh, I've always thought like, wow, God hardened his heart. So where is the free will in this? Actually, he weighed it and saw that this guy wanted to do unrighteousness. And later on in the scripture, it says, et lev He strengthened, not hardened, strengthened, yechazek, to make chazak, the heart of Pharaoh, so that Pharaoh can do his free will. He made it strong so that he can do his free will, and ultimately, God was going to have the victory. He had already weighed the heart of Pharaoh. And so he's telling Moshe, come into his heart. I'm going to show you what's in, what's in his heart with these last three plagues. And interestingly enough, the plagues are Arbe, locusts that destroy, that devour, and the enemy comes as a lion uh, seeking to devour, and he comes to destroy, to steal, and to kill. And uh, the other dar uh, plague is darkness. He is Paro and the powers that be in Hasatan is darkness personified. And it's darkness that you can feel. Like it's, it says here, they're going to have darkness that, that can be felt. And the last is the, the, uh, the, the death of the firstborn. And this is going to be interesting because also the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Paro came to kill, steal, and destroy. He killed the, he started out by killing the babies when Moshe was, was born, around the time when Moshe was born. He was throwing the babies into the Nile River. Um, and so God supernaturally um, uh, protected and shielded the deliverer and, and, you know, ironically raised him up right in the palace of power, right in the eye of the storm, for lack of better words, right in the palace in the, in the throne of Satan, he raised this deliverer to uh, deliver his people. And they nourished him, paid his mother to, to, to wean him. It's crazy. But uh, again, God can turn your enemies into your best friends, <laughs> into your providers, um, if you just follow him and trust him to do his purposes in your life, to fulfill his purposes in your life. So yeah, so basically, Proverbs 20 was telling you that you know, the king's heart basically is in the heart of Hashem. So the king, the, the heart of Pharaoh was in the heart of Hashem. But he weighed it. He weighed it to see if he would do justice, to see if he would do righteousness. And he wasn't. So he allowed it and strengthened him the rest of the time to, uh, when it says harden, he actually strengthened his heart to, so that he may do his will, so that ultimately he may do and fulfill God's will. So God is in control. When the powers that be, governments, politicians are doing wicked things, God actually is weighed their hearts and he strengthened their hearts to do their wickedness only so that he can judge them. Only so that he can judge their gods, judge the idols of the land. Hallelujah. What an exciting, exciting thought. So God is saying to Moshe to tell all of us, come, let me show you what's in the heart of the modern day perils. They're in their hearts is to do is to bring locusts to destroy. In their hearts is to to bring darkness, and in their hearts is to kill, to kill. So, uh, hallelujah, With whatever, however means they can, they're, they're out to kill. We all know that. But he will preserve those who are his. He will, make, he will give light in Goshen when there's darkness upon the earth. Isaiah 60 tells you there'll be darkness upon the whole earth, and gross darkness upon the people, but upon us, upon Zion, upon his people, the glory, the kavod, 
Kavod of Hashem is going to rise up. And that word hikbadati, I have weighed the heart of, um, of, of, Pharaoh, of Pharaoh. In that word is the word kaved, which means heavy, which means heavy. And also the word kavod, which means weighty glory. So this is really about a battle over who will be glorified. And so in the light of um, the, the powers that be, it seems like they have a weighty glory. But compared to the weighty glory of Hashem, it's up there. So the balances are way off. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So he weighs his heart. Let's continue in verse 2. So he says, uh, I have weighed his heart and the heart of his servants. That's verse one still. That I might do what? Show these my signs in the midst of them. So, Leman, Leman Shiti Ototai Ele Bikirbo. So that may show my signs here. Yeah, the signs you could say were the plagues and the wonders, but the signs are always the people. God sets the people aside. He set them apart. When all these things were happening to that cattle, when all these the darkness was upon the land, the sign was not just a plague, the sign was that the people were preserved. So you and I are called to be signs and wonders unto Israel. Signs and wonders to the world. Um, we are the signs. The children of Israel were the sign. He was showing off. He was judging the, the, the gods of Egypt and through his natural signs, the plagues, but also through his supernatural, natural signs, the children of Israel. Verse two, and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son and thy son's son what I have wrought upon Egypt and my sons which I have done among them, that ye may tell it, that ye may know that I am yud -Hey Everything that God does is that we would know and that our sons and our son's sons would know our children and children's children would know that he is yud -Hey vav -Hey. He is Havaya. He is Jehovah. He just wants to be known in an intimate way through the generations. He wants to judge the, our gods, our idols, so that he may be known throughout the nations. And so, you know the rest of the story, and Moshe and Aaron ran into Powell and said unto him, thus says Adonai, the God of the Hebrews, how long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. This is the song that we sang. Let my people go that they may serve me. How long? Will you refuse to humble yourself before me? And there are many that refuse themselves before him. Even in the book of Revelation, even in, in, during the plagues of the Revelation, it says that, and many refuse to um, repent, refuse to humble themselves before him. So there's nothing new under the sun. When it all comes down to it, the same things will happen in the last days. And, um, you know, I, 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 it's interesting to know that. <clears throat> There's nothing new on the sun. During the Tower of Babel, the days of um, the Tower of Babel, with Nimrod, that was a one world power, one world government. During the time of Egypt, uh, Paro, you could say Paro was all powerful on earth. He was a one world um, um, order, one world government. During when Yeshua was first coming, the Roman Empire was spread throughout the whole world. You could say that was a one world government. So there's nothing new under the sun. And upon the return of Yeshua, there will once again be a one world government when Yeshua will come and destroy them with the words, with the flame of fire that's going to come, come out of his mouth. And just like the power and his army are being destroyed by the word that went, that went forth through Moshe and through Aaron. And also, it earlier, is when God first called Moshe, he says, I am heavy of tongue, you know. He says that his lashon, his kavid um, lashon, like his tongue was heavy. And it's interesting that God uses one with a heavy tongue to go and weigh the heart and, and, uh, of one who thinks he is God on earth. So God will use your weakness to weigh out what's in your enemies and what's in his enemies. So... Uh, yeah, there's nothing too difficult for God. He takes the foolish things of the, of the world to confound the wise. He takes your weakness so he may show himself strong. This is how it works. You know, a lot of times we're so strong in ourselves um, that God has to let us get to a place of weakness before he can use us again. He appreciates our zeals 
and, and everything that we do, but he actually looks for weakness. In weakness, he is made strong. He says, let the poor say I am rich. Let the weak say that I am strong. And Gideon, you have way too many. 30,000, cut it down to three and cut it down to 300. 3,000 and then down to 300. So it's like God shows himself strong in place of weakness. Uh, Moshe, 40 years old, strong, a prince of Egypt, tried to deliver the, the children of Israel with his own hand. And God had to send him off to the... Um, to the wilderness for 40 years when he became 80 and weaker and then he sent him forth in his weakness that he may show himself strong the ways of Hashem not our ways we don't understand you would think give it you know send me forth and have the zeal and I'm young and I'm ready to go and and beat us this, this this battle axe and this hammer that will break the rocks in pieces but God wants ways to we're weak in ourselves weak in everything that we, we can do in the flesh and then he sends us and we're like no please send someone else there's no power good you're the perfect person kaved lashon heavy tongue perfect 80 years old perfect so uh we can be encouraged so in your weakness he is made strong he, in your weakness he has made more he has made uh he's glorified more than in our strength because it's like, how come this is this is such a weak person, a weak nation, a weak people? Look at Israel, weak, small, but being made strong in the midst of that. You know, we're becoming a strong nation. Israel's becoming a strong nation, but that's not necessarily good. That's not necessarily good. Because it's in our weakness that God shows himself strong. If we could be, if we become too strong for ourselves, we tend to forget God. And so he has to weaken us again, chas uh, shalom, so that he may show himself strong on our behalf. So rejoice in your weakness. The Apostle Paul, Shaul, Apostle Shaul says uh, to rejoice in your weaknesses. I believe it was Shaul or Peter, I'm not sure, but to rejoice in your weaknesses because when we are weak, he is made strong. Okay, so in the rest of chapter 10, you see, you know, that uh, Mo Pharaoh, Pharaoh is becoming a little bit weaker. A little bit more willing he's like okay you can go you're in the man but not the children and he thinks he's been look you know something's gonna bad's gonna happen to your children I you know I can't let that happen you know um, the the seemingly uh, it says in Proverbs something like the the gentleness or the kindness of the wicked is cruel <laughs> You know, sometimes the wicked is like, oh no, you don't know, but it's actually cruel. Oh, let's let's protect your children. Let's 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 give them all these things, put all these things in their bodies that are poisonous. That's it seems like it's it's good, but it's actually cruel. Here comes um, Pharaoh. No, God forbid that you bring the children to the desert. No, I'm going to shield the children. You can go. You the man can go, but the children will stay. And no, everyone goes. No one gets left behind, not even our cattle, not even a hoof stays behind. So there is no compromise with the powers of darkness. You have to protect yourself, your children, your children's children, and all your possession. And you say, no, it's all covered under the blood, and there will be light in my Goshen. And you go forward with that strength, that might, that is not in you, not in me, but in Adonai Yud Hey Vav Hey. For it is not by might, not by power, but by his Ruach, by his spirit. So, yeah, the rest of chapter 10, there's this thing going on. And the plagues are happening, covering the whole earth with uh, locusts, destroying everything. And Paro, okay, I have sinned against the Lord. You know, uh, in verse 16, he has like a fake moment of repentance. And of course, soon as the locusts were sent back into the red sea into the sea of reeds then pharaoh's heart was strengthened again and he did not let the children of israel go so there's still more testings to come and so then there was darkness that was sent upon the the earth upon israel and i mean uh, i'm sorry there was darkness that was sent upon egypt and upon israel in goshen there was light isaiah 60. And then when that happens with the with the darkness, okay, again, Pharaoh is again more weak. He's allowing them to go with the children, but not the cattle. And Moshe is like, but we need our cattle to offer sacrifices unto our Elohim. And so he's like, no, no well, forget it. You know, you, you, you can't go. You know, um, so his heart was strengthened again, and he was not, he would not let the people go. 
And Pharaoh says something very interesting. Get thee from me. You know, basically, um, lech me alai, lech me po, lech me alai, go away from me. And take heed to yourself, that you make sure you see my face no more. For in the day that you see my face, thou shalt die. So here you go, Pharaoh is prophesying. Earlier in verse 17 of chapter 10, look what he says uh, with the locusts. I have sinned against the Lord, I have sinned against Hashem, your Elohim, and against you, Moshe. Um, entreat Hashem, not, not please forgive me and forgive, I pray thee for my sin only this once. And entreat Hashem, your Elohim, that he may take away from me this death, this mavet. I was like, oh, you haven't seen death yet. He thought the locust was causing death upon um, his land, destroying his land. It looked like a, uh, uh, like a post-war um, um, nation because it was totally destroyed. But this was nothing. This was, this, was, this was not the mavet. The mavet was still to come. So I feel like he was prophesying the death that was coming to them, to him. Um, this is within, earlier, uh, after the, the, the plague of the locusts. And now during the darkness, uh, the plague of darkness, he again repents and he says, okay, you can go, uh, you can take your children. Um, because he saw that God made a difference between the dwellings of the children of Israel and the dwellings of the children of Egypt. And so Pharaoh called Moses, okay, go ye, uh, take your flock, take, take everything. Um, I mean, only take your children, but only let your flock and your herds stay behind and no. Nothing. See, you can see him. When the enemy's starting to break down, he'll make he'll he'll appease with you. He'll he'll make compromise. No, no. Everyone goes. Don't stop. Like, okay, well, okay, we'll accept that. No, there's no middle ground. You do what Hashem tells you to do. You don't like half agree and have one foot in the world, one foot in in the kingdom, have one foot um, um, uh, ob obedience to Hashem, and one foot obeying the things of the world and the powers of this world. So you have to either fully obey God or not there's no middle ground it comes down to that especially when the showdown comes you cannot serve two masters you can only serve one you know paul says that we're either slaves to righteousness or slaves to sin or unrighteousness and so this is exactly what happens with children of israel they're enslaved to power but now that god is sending the deliverer they will become bond servants, servants of Hashem. And the difference is serving Hashem, slaves of, right, of righteousness, being a slave to righteousness brings freedom. Being a slave to righteousness brings peace, shalom, brings hope, faith, love, and all these things. Um, but we're never totally free. We're either serving Hashem or we're serving the other. Even when we say we're serving ourselves, we don't have any God, no, you're actually serving the other side. Because there's no in-between. There's only light and darkness. There's only Hashem and Hasatan and um, the powers of darkness. There's no in-between. There's no neutral ground in spiritual things. Uh, so you're either serving the one true Elohim or you're not serving Him and you're serving other than Him. And He says, I am Hashem and there is no other. Ani Hashem ve'en od. There is no other. He's the one true God. Pharaoh thought he was God on earth. And God came to show him that he is God of heaven and earth and of the seas and everything in between. Hallelujah. So anyway, verse 10 ends with a um, uh, uh, parable threatening Moshe. Like, well, you know, take heed. You know, next time you see my face, you won't, you know, you, you won't see my face anymore. And Moshe says, well, you have spoken well. <laughs> I will see. I will see that face again no more after what was about to come. So he was prophesying. So let's go to verse 11, which is some amazing, amazing, amazing revelation that really blessed my heart, and I hope it blesses you too. I hope you're enjoying this so far. Um, verse 11, I mean, uh, chapter 11, verse 1. Vayomer Adonai al Moshe, od nega echad, avi al paro, ve al mitzrayim, vachay ken, ishlach etchem mize, ke shalto kala, Garesh ye garesh etchem mizeh. Whoa! You know, I've read this so many times, and for some reason I never even like put it together until this this year when I was studying. I was like, what? And Hashem said to Moshe, Yeah, one more plague. One more plague will I bring upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. 
afterwards he will let you go. He will let you go from here. When he shall let you go, and the word kala appears out of nowhere, and when he shall let you go, kala, that means bride, check this out. He shall surely thrust you out hence altogether, and that word garesh, yegaresh, is the same word for lehit garesh, which means divorce. So God is saying, he will let you go, bride, by divorcing you, divorcing you. It, like a true divorce, he will put away, he will put you away. Finally, this was about getting God's bride back to him. This was about a false god enslaving God's bride. And Hashem's like, you will let my bride go. You would divorce her, but it took all these plagues to cause him to divorce him. But look at the ultimate plague that brought about the divorce. What is the next and final plague? Makat Bechawot, the plague of the firstborn. The plague of the firstborn, that's huge because, I'll tell you why this is huge, because it took the death of the firstborn of Paro and the firstborn of all of Egypt that will allow Paro to release the bride of Hashem. The bride was finally released through the death of the firstborn of Paro and all of Egypt. And now the bride of Hashem is restored back to Hashem through the son of Elohim, Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The first, the death of the firstborns of the wicked ones released the bride to go into the wilderness, to receive the Torah, to receive the covenant, to receive the ketubah, the contract, to be betrothed unto Yah, unto yud heh vav -Hey. And it was Yeshua that came, the, the, the husband of blood, who it, through the blood covenant has sanctified the blood uh, of the bride through his blood, through his shed blood, so that she may truly enter into this marriage with yud heh vav -Hey. Hallelujah. What a beautiful picture. I, I, you know, even Paul says, I have betrothed you unto one um, bridegroom, Yeshua HaMashiach. He's betrothed. Uh, and Hosea, Hosea says this in Hosea 2, verse 19 to 20. I will betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice and love and kindness and mercy. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness and emunah and faith. And you shall know yud heh vav -Hey. It's all about knowing, intimate knowing. Vayada et Hashem. And you're going to know him intimately. The Aleph Taf. Earlier in this chapter in Hosea 2, it says this. Therefore, in verse 2, starting from verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and will bring her into the wilderness. This is exactly what happened with the children of Israel. And I will speak comfort to her. I will give her her vineyards from there in the valley of Akor, as a door of hope. She shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came up from the land of Egypt. This is future, it's comparing it to Egypt, but this is exactly what happened in the time of Egypt. And it shall be in that day, says Adonai, that you will no, no longer call me, um, that you will call me my husband and no longer call me my master. Hallelujah, this is something that's going to happen in the future. And this is exactly the picture. What happens in Egypt is exactly the picture that's being painted here. That God is going to call us out. He's going to lure us, bring us into the wilderness, give us the Torah. He's going to betroth us there. Uh, he's going to be engaged with us. And that's when it goes, I will betroth you to me forever. Um, and, you shall, and you shall know me, which speaks of intimacy. But we played the harlot. And so God sent his son, Yeshua. And Yeshua died not just for the sake, for the sins of the world. He died for, to redeem his bride. To redeem his bride, his people, Israel, Zion, and all those who were attached to her. The mixed multitude left out of Egypt is the same. It's the Jews and non-Jews that have attached themselves through the vine and through the olive tree, Israel. They will be the bride just like it was in the days of Moses. And so, and God is betrothing himself 
um, unto a bride and Yeshua is going to complete them and you shall know intimately know at Adonai in that day his name will be one his name will be yud heh vav -Heh, his name will be one in that day Hashem will be one and his name Echad this is the day when it says the mount the, the feet of him will land on the Mount of Olives and this is when we will know him as one so yeah earlier I was looking for the scripture 2 Corinthians 11 2 says for I am jealous for you with godly jealousy for I have betrothed you to one husband that I may that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Mashiach this is um, Apostle Shaul Paul Shaliach um, um, saying he he is as the friend of the bridegroom making sure that we are betrothed to one husband and that we will be a, a chaste virgin unto the Messiah when he returns hallelujah Jeremiah 2 verse 2 to 3 says go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem say thus says Adonai I remember you the kindness of your youth the love of your betrothal when you went after me in the wilderness in the land not sown Israel was Kedusha, Kedosh la Adonai, the first fruit, holiness unto Adonai, the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him will offend, and disaster will call upon them. God is very jealous over those he has betrothed. He's very jealous over his bride, and he will devour all those who offend and all those who come against his bride. Isaiah 54, verse 5 For your maker is your husband, Adonai Tzavaot is his name. And your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, Kadosh Israel, and He is called the God of the whole earth. He is the El Elohim of, of the whole, Kol Haolam, Melech Haolam, Hallelujah, Glory. Romans 6, 16 to 18, Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you, are, you, you slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to Elohim that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of the teaching of the Torah to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, which is missing the mark, missing the mark of the Torah, you have become slaves of righteousness. I was saying earlier that we are either slaves of righteousness or slaves to sin. Choose this day whom you will serve. Hallelujah. Because again, no one is truly free. All serve a master of sorts. And depending on which master you are serving, there is either true liberty and freedom or a counterfeit that leads to bondage. A counterfeit freedom. Oh, I'm free. I'm free. You can't be free and not have Torah, not have the commandments, not have the ways of God. Then you bring yourself to a different bondage. Some people think when you go to the Torah and you go to, to obedience, um, obeying God, you, you're, you're, you're putting yourself in bondage. That's foolishness. The Torah, the instructions of God sets you free. It gives you boundaries to keep you free within the boundaries of righteousness, within the boundaries of holiness, Kedusha, where God reigns. You know, he unless we seek peace and holiness we will not see god it's holiness holiness could mean set apartness set apartness comes by faith to yeshua but also by um working out our salvation and being obedient to god's word to god's torah to god's instructions and forsaking the instructions or the foolishness of the world the traditions that are of, of the things of this world um, we have to make sure we're keepers of god's torah observant of god's word because that's where true freedom is. So choose this day whom you will serve, because you will either be a slave to righteousness, which liberates you into being a son of Elohim, a prince of Yah, or a daughter of Zion, or you'll be slave to sin, which leads you to be a son of the father of lies, Hasatan himself. So choose whom you will serve. Hallelujah. So the Makkah Bechorot, caused the final divorce between Pharaoh and the children of Israel. So somehow they have come into they had come into some kind of alignment with Pharaoh. Um, Egypt um, after Joseph died it says another Pharaoh rose up who did not know, intimately know Joseph, and he put the people in in uh, in, sla in slavery. But I, I have to think that the people had sort of um, assimilated that's what um, Judaism teaches as well. But it makes sense. They have a similar into the things of Egypt, maybe starting to serve the gods of Egypt. Their convictions and their 
and position with God was compromised, that's the only way that um, an entity like power or any powers of darkness can come in and enslave you. Because if you were um, a slave to righteousness to begin with, you were doing righteous, then unrighteousness cannot calm you and pull you in into, um, into bondage. It's when you compromise your righteousness that you can come into some kind of slavery um, to unrighteousness and to sin. So we know that happened. So they became somewhat um, betrothed to Paro, who was a god on earth and was serving him with hard labor because that's what happens when you serve a Satan. It may start out good, but it ends up you're a slave. You end up building bricks with no straw. So it's so important to choose who you will serve. But finally, finally, it took the Makat Bechorot, the, the, the plague of the firstborn, to weaken and destroy the heart of Pharaoh. And finally, he was willing to let God's people go. So I, I'm amazed because in chapter 11, Moshe told Pharaoh this is what's going to happen. He says, Thus says the in verse 4, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, Mitzrayim, and all the firstborn of the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sits on the throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant, you know, the greatest to the smallest, and, uh, and all the firstborn of the cattle. He tells them what's going to happen. You would think, oh no, don't, don't, you know, don't kill my firstborn. You would think there will be some kind, but he still thinks, ah. He doesn't take God seriously or the, or the word of the prophet. Seriously, after dealing with nine plagues that he sure saw that it was, it, they all came to pass. And they were removed um, at the um, word of Moshe when he interceded and stood in the gap for Egypt and for Pharaoh when he says, yes, tell, 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 um, um, entreat to, to Hashem to remove, forgive us, entreat to Hashem to remove these plagues from us. So he knew these plagues were coming. I don't understand how he was like, wait, he heard very clearly that your firstborn is going to die, yet he didn't care. Again, his heart was strengthened to do the unrighteous and injustice that was in his heart, but also what comes around goes around. He took the lives of so many Hebrew sons and threw them in the Nile River, and now it's going to come back to him and to all of his people, down to the from the greatest to the smallest. And Pharaoh did not hearken unto unto him, and God says, "Just so that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt." And Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, but yet by Chazek Adonai. At Lev Paro, and the Lord made strong the heart of Paro, and he did not let the children of Israel go out of his land. Well, he's going to through the death of the firstborn again. Ah, Gilshin, divorce from that word. You see that he thrust them out. There was a divorce, a holy divorce is coming so that God can now betroth his people. She is free. She's no longer under her false husband, her false Baal. But now she's about to go into the wilderness to receive the ketubah. This is such a beautiful love story. I love it. The more you look at it like this, it was like such a battle. Oh, I want, that's my bride. You're going to have to let her go. God is so jealous over us. Wow. When Israel was a child, I loved them. Out of, out of Babylon, I'm calling my bride. That's one of my songs. It's from Hosea 9 or 11, I believe. It says, uh, out of Egypt I've caught my son, and uh, I will draw him, or I have drawn him with, with gentle cords. I have drawn him with gentle cords and bands of love. So God is drawing his children, his kala, again, with gentle cords and bands of love. He loves us so much, and we need to understand that so that we may be a people of strong resolve and strong faith and strong backbones so yeah in chapter 12 you know God through Moshe is given instructions to give to the children of Israel to set this day apart it'll be a memorial for the children of Israel for all time and he's telling them what they need to do they need to be um, um, for every household a lamb 
um, which is prophetic patron. They, they apply the blood of the lamb over their doors and uh, the doorposts, etc., to protect them from the, the, the deaf angel. And they partake of the last way Yeshua says, unless you um, drink my blood and eat my flesh, you will not have any part of me. So because he is the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world and you have to apply the blood and you have to eat the lamb and nothing can be left over. You have to devour this word. You have to devour this word from Genesis to Revelation for he is the Memra, the word, the Elohim. He is the, the living word, the living Torah. So we need to eat this word. We need to apply the blood by faith so that we may be preserved from the deaf angel that's coming in the latter days and all the craziness that's coming. So we need to be a protected people. We need to understand these beautiful mysteries. Hallelujah! That's been fulfilled through our Messiah, Yeshua. Melech HaOlam, King of the Universe. Hallelujah! Wow, that's why it says the, 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 the gospel, is, the mystery of the gospel is amazing that he gives it to... To, to the foolish things, it's to the learned and to those who have, so, it goes over their heads, but to those who humble themselves, the mystery is revealed and it's so beautiful. It's such a love story and it's like God will do anything to go after us. You know, for God so loved the world, if we don't understand this, truly, we don't understand this love until we understand what God himself has done. That he sent his firstborn son, his firstborn, his only son, Yeshua. Israel is a firstborn in the natural, but Yeshua is the spiritual firstborn. He is the Ben Elohim, Ben David. And through this Akeda, through this sacrifice, we are redeemed. Through the sacrifice, the bride, the Kala, is redeemed. And the bride can now rejoin HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be He, and be one Echad through the Messiah, Yeshua. It's such a beautiful story. He's coming to redeem his bride. He's coming to, yeah, bring us unto himself. So basically chapter 12 is giving instructions on what to do. And, and, uh, and, then, it, and then, then there's the actual fulfillment of the Makat Bechawot. And we're instructed to teach our children about this night and that God with a strong hand has he brought us out and it says in chapter 12 also that a mixed multitude went up also with them with flocks and herds and very much cattle also when you serve God God will cause you to find favor in the sight even of your enemies and they gave them whatever they asked hallelujah they did not to manipulate they didn't have to do anything they just asked when the time is right God would tell you who to ask if you need to ask at all, sometimes God can just give you. Because it says in the, in, the, in the prophets that the Zahab is mine, the gold is mine, the Kesef is mine. Silver is mine and the gold is mine. And so um, even though they were slaves all these years, <clears throat> it was right for them to be recompensed. But nevertheless, this is showing me that um, God is saying even when the Zahab and the Kesef, the silver and the gold, the gold and the silver is in the possession of the evil one, of the wicked ones. It is still his gold and his silver. And there will be a transference of wealth at some point. That is scriptural. That is, you, you see it throughout the scriptures and um, throughout David's battles, there will be spoils. Take the gold and the silver of the enemy. And you see that here in Egypt as well. And it's going to be the same in the last days. It's going to be a transference of wealth. And who knows? God may just say, just ask. You, you do not have because you do not ask. So maybe when he says to ask, we need to ask. And it will be re released unto us. So the silver and the gold is his. The wicked have it right now, but they're just holding it for us. Because it's his. Think about it. It's crazy. All these billionaires, trillionaires that are wicked, doing wicked things. They don't. God is far from their thoughts. That money, that silver, that gold is Hashem's. The silver and the gold is his, and he gives it to whomever he wants to when the time is right. So all we have to do is seek first the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness, and all things will be added on. We don't need to worry. We don't need to stress. The, re the, the release of the funds will come. And it's going to be so that we can build them a mikdash, so we can build them a sanctuary, 
and not a golden calf. You have to be careful what you do with the transference of wealth when it comes. You don't build a golden calf. As we're going to be learning in the next couple of weeks, we are to build him a mikdash, set apart place for him to dwell in our families, in our communities, in our cities, in our nations, in Yerushalayim. And we're going to build the Beit HaMikdash, the house of prayer for all nations that according to Isaiah, the people will flock to in the latter days. I could see now why, because all the churches and everything is broken down. People are going to be like, man, let's go to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. Let's go. Isaiah 2 and Micah 4 is going to be fulfilled with great joy. They're going to be bringing their, their tithes and their, their wealth and their everything and their sacrifices and 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 just like yeah yeah it's gonna be awesome and their hearts of joy and hearts of worship so it's gonna be some good stuff so we have so much to look forward to we cannot lose heart when we see what's happening in the world know that he is in control he's got this you see the blueprint throughout the torah if you study the torah you can only smile it's like this is exactly what's happening right now this is exactly what's happening that's what happened and uh, during this time there is this error it's, it's the same old thing same old thing so do not lose heart put your trust in no man no princes no government because the government is upon his shoulder and of the increase of his government and of his shalom and of his peace there will be no end so it's best to be governed by him by his word so that you will have also um, uh, uh, endless peace, shalom, and joy. Hallelujah. So verse thir uh, chapter 13 ends with, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn. Whatsoever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both men of, and of beasts, it shall be mine. So again, the firstborn of Israel were spared during that because they apply the blood but all the um, firstborn of Egyptians and those who did not apply the blood um, were killed so now God is saying those that were spared because of my blood or the blood of the lamb that's to come they are mine set them apart for me because I paid for them with a great price the blood of the lamb was just a prophetic picture of the blood of Yeshua that was going to be shed. And so when his blood is applied over us, not just the firstborns, all the firstborn of, um, um, uh, in the natural, but the firstborn the spiritual that have come to him. All of us that have come um, belong to him, belong to him at a great price. Hallelujah. So God is um, commending us to remember this day when we came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of hand did Adonai bring you out from this place. And there shall be no bread, leaven bread eaten on that day, just as a reminder. Hallelujah. We can go so much deeper into it, but I'm going to stop because the time is getting late. And unfortunately, again, this won't be able to go up until Motzei Shabbat here in Israel. Um, it's always a challenge to get these teachings done. But uh, I try to do the best I can to get them done. And hopefully the Wi-Fi won't be so crazy slow. Like, anyway, hopefully you have it um, not too far after our Motzei Shabbat. Um, um, and, and anyway... Um, the children of Israel are leaving with the Zahav, with the Kesef. They asked of their neighbors and was given unto them. They are being set free through the death of the firstborn. Now there's a divorce um, from the former husband or master, Pharaoh. And now they are about to go into the wilderness um, to um, meet with their new husband, their new master. But you know, like a uh, like a crazy soap opera, the old boyfriend realized, what did I do to let 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 the let the children of Israel go? So next week you see that they're, they're gonna chase him. He's gonna chase um, the ex girlfriend, trying to get her back, and God, who is zealous over his his bride um, to be, he's about to betroth. He's about to cleanse her, um, immerse her, baptize her through the Red Sea. They don't know that yet. What's about to happen? He is going to destroy the ex-boyfriend that is chasing after his kala. <laughs> so stay tuned. This soap opera gets better. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom. God bless. And I will leave you with this song. Mm -hmm. 
ורסתיק לי לעולם, ורסתיק לי בצדק, ובמשפט Betroth you to me forever will be troth you in righteousness and in justice and loving kindness I will be troth you to me in mercy I will be troth you to me forever I will be troth you in righteousness Betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know how I am. Yes, you shall know, you shall know, you shall know, Jehovah. Yes, you shall know, you shall Yes, you shall know, you shall know, you shall know, I shall know. Shalom, beloved. Shabbat Shalom. See you again. Shavuot Tov to those who are watching on a new week. And God bless you and keep you and serve Him with all your heart.
He will preserve you. He will provide for you. Lean upon your beloved in this season, in this wilderness season that we're all in. Lean upon your beloved. Get to know him intimately, and he will preserve you as his bride, as his kala. Hallelujah. Divorce yourself from the world. Divorce yourself from Pharaoh. Divorce yourself from media, from the voices of the false prophets, and hear the voice of prophecy in his Torah, the voice that testifies to Yeshua from Genesis to Revelation. God bless you and be kept in truth. Hallelujah. By the spirit of truth. Shabbat Shalom.